Two years ago, I took a flight to Nepal and it completely changed my life. I stayed several months at a Buddhist monastery near Kathmandu with around 120 monks. And the lessons I learned and the things I understood helped me to change my life into a better one. So stick around because maybe these lessons help you also transform your life into a better one and help you to achieve your biggest dream. Before I boarded the plane to Nepal, it seemed like I had everything. I had my own company, my own car, my own flat. I could go on some vacations two or three times a year. Yet despite of all these things I felt lost. I had no clue what the meaning of my life is or what I'm supposed to do. So I made the decision many around me couldn't understand at all. I gave up my old life. I let go of my car, of my apartment, of my own business and 99% of all the things I owned. And I found myself in a monastery nestled in front of the Himalayas. In Nepal. And guys, can you do me a favor? If you want to support me and if you are like what I'm doing, then do me a favor and activate the bell, subscribe and like the video. It's completely free, but it means the world to me. One of the first things I realized was how fast our possessions can turn in our prisons, trapping us in a life what doesn't really fulfill us. But let me explain what I mean by that. We all know these feelings. We want to have this mobile phone, this car, this jacket, this house, whatever it is. And we start to work for our goal, we start to save everything and finally getting it. We experience a moment of happiness and it feels like we can touch the cloud, we finally achieved our goal. Only to find ourselves wanting something new after that. Possessions, while often seen as of success and security, can become quickly a prison. The more we accumulate, the more we feel the need to secure and maintain what we own. This attachment to things can often lead to anxiety and fear. Fear of not having enough and fear of change. Our possessions begin to control our actions and decisions, and so limiting our freedom. So instead of making our life better, they are trapping us in a circle of worry and dependency, where the things we own end up owning us. And I understood this really fast. You know, I came to Nepal, I gave everything up and I had just three bags left. And as three bags, my entire life was stored and I realized, wow, I feel so free and so happy like never before because I have nothing, nothing left to lose. It was like I cleared up all the unnecessary stuff I had. I put all the rubbish and the trash out of my, my life and now it was like I could breathe for the first time again. Now, still, I just live from these three backpacks. I have no home in Europe anymore. But you know what? I think I'm much richer than the most people I know here in Europe because I've rented a little house in the mountains of Nepal surrounded with wild jungle and nature. I can wake up every morning with the sounds of the jungle and the sounds of the birds. I can drink every day water from a spring and I can eat the best food without chemicals. And I think this is a different type of richness, but I prefer this much more. And believe me, I experienced both sides. This is the first insight I wanted to share with you. So ask yourself before you buy something or before you do something, do I really want to do? Is it good for my life? Does it feel good when I hear to my inner voice? And then decide what is the right choice for you. The second thing I understand is one of my favorite ones. It is that life is a game. And yeah, now it sounds strange, but let me explain. Life can be seen as a fast, ever-changing game. Each of us a player navigating through experience and challenges to grow as a human being. Just like in a game, the purpose is not always to win the game. And I know it sounds cheesy and I don't know it's an old thing, but it's more about the way. And while we're on the way to our goal, you should enjoy this way because you can learn so much and not just from your wins. I guess you can learn much more from your failures and from the times where things don't go as planned. Every challenge we face is an opportunity to level up, to learn and be, to become a better and stronger person. And I think this time where we're living, this is one of the most important things. Make yourself stronger, make yourself better for yourself. And these days everybody wants everything super fast without work and just want to enjoy the good things. But that's not how life is working because when everybody just gives you one million dollar and everything you want, you will end up get depressed or whatever because you can't handle the success, you can't handle this money. You have to grow with your success, you have to grow with your challenges, you have to grow with all the things that happen in your life to become the person you want to be. So stop to hope for winning in the lottery or stop to hope to somebody gives you 
$10,000 or something. Just start to take responsibility for your life and start to play the game of life because but once you start to take everything so serious and just look at everything with negative and this is a problem and this is a problem, life will give you more of the problems and these negative emotions. But when you say, okay, let's play this game, and even though something doesn't work out how I wanted it, it's okay because I can learn from it and I can make it better and find a way how it works. So the key is play with an open heart, stay curious and be happy for every challenge and experience what comes into your life and never lose sight of the deeper meaning behind every step we take. It is important that you understand that both times are good, the difficult times and the good times. And this is, to be honest, one of the most important things I learned and one of the most important things that helped me to change my life. I've learned to shift my mindset from asking myself why is this happening to me, it's so unfair, to what can I learn from it and how can it help me in my life. You know, another thing I learned is that the understanding of a monk we have in the West is all oh, these people are meditating the whole time and they're just peaceful, have no worries and are enlightenment and oh, Oh, everything is so easy, you know, because no problems. Well, guys, this is not true. And yes, I also thought like this before I came to the monastery, but let me tell you how it is. The journey from a monk is not free from inner struggle. Because imagine that these people also come as a little child in a monastery where they don't know what it really means to be a monk, what it means to pay your whole life as a monk, because it means no family, no kids, uh, and so on, you know, not the things normal people have. They spend years of meditation and seeking to understand the path of existence, and yet this path is not always clear. Monks, like everybody else, struggle with questions. Why I'm here? What is my purpose? And is this the right path for me? The commitment to a life of simplicity and mindfulness does explain them from the human experience of feeling lost and unsure what to do. In fact, the journey often involves deep-seated fears and the complexities of the mind. The difference is that these people look at these thoughts or problems completely different than we do. They take it as a part of their enlightenment. They take it as a part of their journey. So they're not judging it. They just try to figure it out, but without saying this is right or this is bad, this is good and so on. Even with this mindset, the path is not always easy and this is okay because we are all human beings and not even a guru or something is free from worry. So believe me, even such guru or Dalai Lama, they all experienced fear at one point. They all experienced this thought of, I don't know what to do, I don't know if this is the right path. because. If they didn't experience this, they couldn't teach you about this stuff. And with that, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you like to support me, subscribe, activate the bell and like the video. And I hope I see you next week, guys. Thank you for watching.